1961, Polish composer Krzysztof Penderecki composed a piece of music that became internationally renowned for being both beautiful and terrifying. It consisted of 52 different stringed instruments and originally, when he wrote it, the piece came out to 8 minutes and 37 seconds in length. This was the original title of the composition, however after he heard the full completed piece live, he decided to dedicate it to the victims of the atomic bombing in the city of Hiroshima thus changing the official name to Threnody to the Victims of Hiroshima, a fitting title considering that this piece plays like the soundtrack to a tragedy. Listeners have understandably stated that this song evokes feelings of fear, loneliness, and dread. Although this is considered to be the first time he was given widespread acclaim, Kristoff was no stranger to creating dark, experimental compositions. Born in 1933 in the southeast of Poland, Kristoff was a child when the Second World War began. He often describes his music as a reaction to the things that he saw growing up. A number of his family members were killed during this time, and being raised in a war-torn part of Europe that had tight censorship laws meant that Kristoff couldn't properly express himself through music. This is until the mid-1950s when those same laws were abolished and Poland saw an influx in the creative world. Musically, Kristoff was at the forefront of this. In 1958, he began teaching at the Academy of Music in the city of Krakow, and he continued to create his compositions. A year after his threnody to Hiroshima brought him major acclaim, he created the composition known as Fluorescences. And a year after that, he began working on a major composition known as St. Luke Passion, which was originally performed in 1966. If you listen to these three pieces, you'll begin to notice some trends. For one, dark undertones exist in every one of them. In some cases, the entire piece is an eerie and haunting composition, and in other cases it's merely an aspect of a much larger puzzle, but those dark undertones are always there. The other trend in these pieces is his experimentation. He did things that were rarely seen at the time, adding instruments that seemed completely out of place, scoring his music in a slightly wild and messy way, and breaking a lot of the norms that were seen around that time. All I'm interested in is liberating sound beyond all tradition, a quote that he would stay true to in later years by continuing with this experimental nature, but in different ways. From the snippets that I've shown you, you may notice that some of these compositions sound familiar, and that's because excerpts of Kristoff's work have been used in multiple different classic horror movies, such as The Exorcist and The Shining. Maybe it was about him. I think we should discuss Danny. I think we should discuss what should be done. You can easily see how these compositions fit in very well with the score of a film like this, and these movies obviously have a major impact in the world of horror and cinema in general. In the 2000s, other well-known directors like Martin Scorsese and David Lynch would follow suit by also using Penderecki's music in their movies. He became known as horror's favorite composer, and based on the impact that these movies and directors had, it's fair to say that Kristoff essentially changed the way that these movies were scored at least in American cinema. Interestingly, he never directly worked on any of these movies that I mentioned. He simply gave them the permission to use the music or to make their own versions of his compositions. Instead of working on these movies, he instead opted to help score experimental films, animations, and documentaries, but from afar, he was quietly influencing thousands of other scores across the world. These dark, intense tones would bleed into the world of horror, and although the scores from classic horror movies are already quite creepy and ominous, Penderecki's influence helped take this to a new level, a different type of sinister, one that would draw in and terrify audiences for years. Kristoff's work was not met without controversy. He's spoken in past interviews about issues he's had with the church and the state regarding the nature of his work. Yes, the censorship laws had been loosened, but it was still the 50s and 60s when he got his foot in the door, and making music that had undertones as dark as this definitely got him in some hot water a number of times. I wanted to write a piece which is uh, telling the truth. 
And of course this piece was also very much criticized by the church uh, in Germany. The same happened in, in Poland, of course, after the, the premiere. And it was in the same time, there was a premiere in Rome. So the Vatican wanted me to stop the performance. I didn't do it. So I, I started to have a problem with the church, of course. Still, that didn't stop him from composing what he wanted. He continued to make this music throughout his life, making more hauntingly beautiful work. He became a professor at Yale University in the 1970s, and around this time, his style started to change. In so many words, he believed that as the avant-garde experimental world got more and more popular and universal, the creative liberties it once made were fading away, and instead he believed that by adopting a more traditional style, he could escape that world and find a new type of creative liberty. This style was seen in one of his best-known works, which he created in the 80s, Polish Requiem. Originally, he was commissioned to make a single piece of music that was dedicated to the victims of the 1970 Polish protests, and after creating it, he decided to turn it into a full tribute. So in a sense, it was similar to the Threnody that he had created for Hiroshima, but it was a more all-encompassing tribute for the people of his country. His work continued throughout the 90s and the 2000s, and he's very much so stayed in the public eye up until very recently. So much so that he actually won his third Grammy in 2017, around six decades after he he began his career. Kristoff is also a major influence to many accomplished musicians, one of the most notable ones being Johnny Greenwood of Radiohead. The pair actually collaborated together and unsurprisingly, Greenwood has also scored a plethora of movies and these scores also take some major influence from Kristoff. Unfortunately, Kristoff passed away in March of 2020. From the moment he started, he created thought-provoking music that stayed relevant and consistent for decades. He also challenged norms, made unconventional art, and inspired countless others to do the same. He was thoroughly successful in his mission to achieve the creative liberty that he desired so badly, and as his music continues to inspire, he will continue to achieve that long after his death.